client server made easy with the socket messaging library for Delphi. I'm Patrick Pomartin, MVP Embarcadero, freelance developer, streamer on Twitch. You can uh, reach me and see all my links on uh, vasur.fr uh, slash uh, gravatar. Today I'll speak about a new library uh, I've published uh, on uh, GitHub uh, to make client server programs uh, easy. Uh, here is the agenda. The presentation and all links, uh, commands, so source code and uh, other uh, things will be available on uh, GitHub soon. If you have questions, uh, use the chat. Uh, I'll answer uh, there. Or uh, after the presentation, you can contact me on uh, developer.com uh, or uh, Delphi Praxis forums. What is a network socket? A socket is a lower level API to communicate between programs over an IP network. It opens a port on an IP address with read-write access and a transport mode. All client servers on the local IP network or on the internet communicate through sockets, even your browser. More information on Wikipedia with the links at the bottom of the page. How to use a socket in Delphi? Uh, we can use a lot of uh, open source or commercial libraries uh, and components like uh, Indy or uh, ECS from uh, Overbytes. Uh, we can use a native multi-platform socket class included in recent Delphi release from uh, system.net.socketunit. And you have the link to the doc. Basically, on server over a TCP IP network, uh, the server creates a socket on an IP port and listens on it. It waits for new connected clients. The client creates a socket on the server IP port and connects to it. The server receives the connection demand and creates a new socket on a different port to exchange messages with the client. Server and client wait on connected sockets to send and receive messages. Messages are uh, buffers of bytes or uh, other formats depending on the libraries. Uh, we need to use a thread for each socket so uh, as not to block the operation of the program or the user. Here is a sample project. It's a FireMonkey project. I used the same program for the client and the server. The server port is uh, 8081. Uh, when I click on the button, uh, I create a new client uh, only to send a message to the server and uh, close it. The listening server is uh, created in a task uh, in a form create event. The server socket is uh, as a type and an encoding. It listens on localhost with the parametered uh, port. Depending of uh, our needs, uh, we can use a service name instead of uh, the port. Each socket has a state client listening or uh, connected in the case of uh, the server listening and connected are uh, used in the listening server uh, we wait for a new connection of clients the thread loop uh, is only an accept with a timeout and uh, if the accept is okay we have a new socket as a tsocket uh, class instance uh, if not we have a nil uh, we send it to a server thread connection where we have a new task uh, with only the client uh, connected. Uh, this task has a loop uh, in which uh, we wait for uh, receiving strings from the client. Each string is uh, ended by the setAminator uh, constant. If we have uh, received the string, we can send an hack message as answer. 
The client itself is also a task created in the button. Uh, it has uh, the same uh, socket type and encoding as the server and uh, open a connect connection uh, to the same port of the server and the same uh, IP. The state is uh, client and uh, connected, listening is only uh, for the server uh, waiting uh, socket. When the client is connected, uh, it sends a number uh, to the server with a hello world text. And uh, after that, uh, it uh, wait for the ACK uh, answer from the server. Let's start the program. We can see the server is connected and listening. I click the button and create a new task for the client, which is also connected as a client and send something. The server receives the hello world message and answered with the ACK. Here you can see what is uh, done on the connected client uh, side uh, for the server. I can click the button more than once. Uh, it uh, creates a, a new client with a new task each time I uh, click on it. The error message is uh, the T socket from the listening server. What is the socket messaging library for Delphi? For the Candy Jam uh, 2023, I wanted to create a multiplayer game and needed a client server system. As usual, I started from scratch and implemented it from start to finish, but it took a lot of time coding and debugging. I use share records uh, for the data I changed, which had the side effects compared with uh, what I wanted to achieve. After the game jam, I thought about optimizing that and uh, coded and simplifying the code uh, so uh, that I could use it elsewhere much more quickly. The result was the socket messaging library I release on GitHub. The library is an open source project. It's composed by uh, units, usable from uh, VCL, FireMonkey, console and uh, other um, projects. Uh, it uses uh, classes uh, instead of records. I decided to use the socket uh, class from Embarcadero to limit external dependencies. The client and the server exchange text and numeric values in a new sample I'll show uh, now. All the code has been uh, written by Ant and uh, it's still too much code, in my opinion. Here we have uh, two uh, FMX projects, uh, sample uh, server and sample client. Uh, on each, I have the IP and port uh, address uh, and the button to uh, connect, an edit field and a button to send a message. Uh, I created uh, manually uh, the T message 1, T message 2, and register message uh, code uh, in the UText messages unit. In the server sample, uh, the start the server button, activate listen uh, on the server thread. When I click to send uh, all clients, a uh, message is sent to uh, all connected clients. On 
On the client sample, uh, the, I use the same library, uh, ALF, uh, NET, uh, socket, messaging, dot pass, and I connect uh, my client thread uh, to the server. For the server, the socket messaging library uh, creates a new connected client instance. When I click send to the server uh, button, um, the client uh, send a T message one uh, instance. On the server, the T message one instance is uh, received by uh, on receive message one. To use the library on uh, your program, you need a T -Olf socket messaging server and a T -Olf socket messaging client. The register messages uh, they have to uh, receive and uh, subscribe the methods uh, to uh, treat the receiving messages. It's the same thing on the client and the server side. The methods to uh, receive the message as the sender as parameter and the message. Uh, you only have to use their properties and to send a message, you create a new instance and you send message after uh, filling properties. In this project, the server and the client receives message 1 and message 2. Uh, they uh, put the content on a memo when they receive something and uh, depending on the side, uh, they uh, send a new message to the other one. Let's see it in action. We start the sample server and click the start the server to uh, listen. Uh, starting the client and connect it after uh, launching other clients to see uh, the broadcast messages. We connect the clients and we send a message from the server to all clients. In uh, one client, uh, we send a message to the server, which uh, responds with a uh, message to uh, the three numbers. The client uh, send message to, to the server, which uh, uh, display only the message on the memo. Let's see what is needed to use the library. Uh, you have a register message uh, with instance of each message to declare on the uh, client or the server when it uh, needs to receive it. You also have to uh, use a method uh, to um, interpret the message. How to use the socket messaging code generator. Writing a message class is simple. Writing two message classes is a copy-paste operation from the first one. Writing hundreds messages is a stupid idea when it's practically copy-paste and not really maintainable. To write less code each time, I've written a lot of code one time. Now I have a code generator with a simple user interface. It's an open source project uh, available on GitHub and uh, you can download the compiled program. Coding a simple chat program from scratch. Think at your user interface and your data model. Uh, think at what data is needed for each program when speaking to others. Use socket messaging code generator to uh, define your messages and export them uh, as a Delphi unit. Import the socket messaging library and the generator unit in your projects. Create an instance of the client class on each client and the server class on the server. Implement the onReceive message event 
uh, and beware of uh, synchronizing events and uh, your uh, user interface. Run your program and enjoy coding with low code. Here is a sample project. In this demo, we use the socket messaging code generator to uh, declare all messages, uh, classes and uh, properties. This project will be a chat. Uh, we need uh, to dialogue with uh, between two clients, two or more clients, uh, with a server. I have a send message uh, message from a client to the server and another message from the server to all connected clients. In the code generator, we declare a project, the messages and each properties for them. The properties has a type default value and explains the program how to uh, load and save them uh, to the stream and to the socket. For each message, we specify if it's received by the server or by the client. For a specific type, the default value can be uh, everything uh, in Pascal language. It's uh, used on the create uh, constructor of the class. I save the code generator project and export the unit. Now we have to code a little. I create a new project group uh, with the FireMonkey project and the console application. For the server, I use the console application because I can transform it into a dem Linux daemon or a Windows service. I add the generated unit and the library units to all programs. As you can see, the generator has uh, created a unit with uh, messages uh, registering and a client and server class. Now I create my server class on the server program. It inherits from the uh, TDL server the server class generated by the code generator. I add a variable and I create an instance. Specify the event to receive my messages. The T message class name is transformed on on receive the name of the class. We start the server with listen. To fill the event, uh, to create a new method, uh, I don't uh, know which is uh, its signature, so I copy from the library. And that's all. I have my server. Uh, the only thing to to do is to uh, implement the receiving message.
chat server receive a text from a connected client it creates a new message for broadcasting the message to all client connected The server is done, uh, I start it and uh, have to uh, work on the client. The user interface is done. Let's code. With the socket messaging library, the code is the same on the client and the server. You only have to declare a receiving message on each part. So I copy the declaration of do receive send message from the server and adapt it to the client and its broadcast message. After that, I create an instance of the client uh, class. When we click on the send button, we have to send a message to the server. When the message is sent from the client, the server uh, sends the same message with the date to all connected clients, uh, even the sender of the first message. So uh, in the client, we don't have to uh, display the message we send, but the message we receive. All sockets are in the thread, so uh, you need to synchronize uh, all events to your user interface if uh, you change something. I finished to code, now we can try. As you can see, it works.
Coding a real-time multiplayer game. Uh, you want to code a real-time multiplayer game. It's not really different than the previous sample, except for the user interface, of course. Uh, define the data to exchange. Generate your units with a circuit messaging code generator. Code your game client program. User interface plus local data catch. Uh, code your server program. Uh, no user interface, of course. Uh, only the global game database uh, receiving action from users, sending a user action to all others. Uh, I have a little sample and uh, more on the GitHub if you want. In this sample, I wanted to show you a little game, uh, multiplayer and real time, but uh, the code is not uh, fully functional, so uh, I created uh, something. Uh, a little uh, easier <laughs> and simpler. Uh, uh, like a pixel war, uh, some uh, players can uh, put pixel with a color on the screen and uh, change the image on uh, other screens. Like for a previous sample, I create a FireMonkey project for the client and the console application for the server. After adding the library, I use the code generator to create my message and the units. Like for the chat, in this project I need two messages. Uh, the X and Y position from the click and the color uh, will be sent to the server by the client. The server will broadcast the message to all connected clients except the sender. As I use the FireMonkey project, I want to use the same type uh, for color than the IDE and the library. So I use T alpha color from system.uit units. The alpha color is not in the uh, units uh, the code generator use. So uh, we specify the system.uit unit to uh, include to the uses. In this program, I could have uh, used the same message. I save the project and export the units. In the generated code, uh, system UI tip is not uh, available. Uh, I forgotten to uh, validate it. I change the message project and re-export.
Like I did in the chat sample, I'll start with the server. I create the server class uh, and uh, declare uh, the server variable to uh, create an instance uh, parameter it. When the server receives the message, uh, it sends the broadcast. But when sending to all, uh, we specify the sender. Uh, to avoid sending the message to him. The server is OK and started. We can go to the client. For the client, I don't need a new class. I can use the uh, form class uh, and declare uh, the methods to receive messages directly in it. The technical part done, we have to do the uh, user interface and connect it to the client uh, class. For this project, I use the scale layout. Uh, as the background and the rectangle components on it. Uh, it's not a good usage of the t rectangle because uh, we have a lot of components instead of having only one image and uh, one click on it. I want a square background and resize it when the form resize.
Of course, I don't add the rectangles uh, directly from the form editor. Uh, <laughs> I program a loop to do that. In FireMonkey, with an eight of uh, components are uh, singles, so we can't divide it by an, un uh, an integer. I check if the display is good, but uh, the layout uh, is a little too big. Uh, and uh, I try uh, with a client with and client 8 instead of uh, with and 8 to remove the title of the um, title bar of the window. It's a little better, but uh, not the solution. In fact, I've forgotten the plus uh, one <laughs> for the call number and the row numbers in the loop. The display is good. Uh, I add the click event on the each rectangle. 2500 click events. When we click on a rectangle, uh, we send to the server the coordinates of the rectangle and the color. When I'm creating the, the rectangles, I uh, stored the X and Y position in the tag and tag float. We manage the click on the rectangle, now we have to manage the message from the server.
having one image with a canvas is a better choice than what I uh, used in this sample. The loop to find the component is slow and uh, if you have uh, many players on the same uh, server uh, it uh, could be a big problem uh, for your uh, program. It works with red, let's try with other colors. To add uh, some speed on the click, uh, I uh, use the thread to send the messages and not uh, wait for it in the uh, main thread. A better way to do this uh, is to use uh, Q. Uh, the program uh, in the main thread add uh, the coordinates and colors in the queue and uh, thread somewhere send the messages to the server. Uh, don't do it in the main thread uh, because all uh, network access are uh, slow. And uh, when you use a create anonymous thread, don't forget the start. It works as expected. Thanks for watching. See you later. Wow.
You said you wanted some coding demos. That was a whole ton of code there. <laughs> Fantastic demo from Patrick. And Patrick is answering questions uh, live in the chat. Um, even though his, his English is actually pretty good, he, he's, uh, I, I, I totally get it. It's a bit different to, uh, it's the same with me with French. I can read French pretty well, but the minute someone says, oh, say something in French, you're like, uh, 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 and you suddenly, every word you've ever learned in French goes out of your head. So uh, uh, it's the same with English for Patrick. So there you go. Uh, he'll get better. He describes um, the sessions that we get involved in uh, and uh, the webinars as his English lessons. <laughs> I, I don't know whether that's the best place to learn English, but there you go. Um, he uh, <laughs> he says in French, "Bonjour, quel fromage avez-vous?" Uh, ha, hello, do you have what cheese do you have? <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, brilliant. Uh, 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 it was a good session, and uh, what I liked about that was um, Patrick was showing some really um, cool things like anonymous threads and stuff like that, and showing. Um, you know, real code being used in Rad Studio and uh, making it absolutely clear that, um, you know, Delphi, uh, you, you occasionally get people saying, Delphi, oh, I haven't used that for years. I used to love it. And you think, well, oh, I, I still love it. Why aren't you using it? Because, <laughs> you know, oh, well, you know, we use such and such uh, language. And you think, you're really doing things the hard way. I mean, you know, if you swap to C++, for example, are you crazy? That's, that's, like walking over rocks barefoot instead of using shoes to protect your feet. I don't, I don't know why we do that. I mean, it's very powerful. You know, C++ is very powerful, but uh, no, not so great. Gabe uh, Gabe said, uh, Patrick, your English is great. So there you go. Uh, other people have said it. He did, Patrick did let, uh, let on that he used a little script, actually, I think, as well, to, to help him along, which is how I would do French as well. Um, but lots and lots of uh, feedback, you know, positive feedback saying great demo um, and uh, people saying good, uh, good, um, good job, Patrick. And uh, and also uh, Dr. Kevin Bond as well, uh, one of our um, regular speakers on webinars. He's, he wrote literally wrote the book about development uh, and software development. And uh, he says impressive as well. And. Uh, Patrick, as from Dr. Bond, he, he's a pretty smart guy. So if he thinks what you've done is impressive, it's impressive. And I think um, Patrick showed it well as well. He's laughing. Yeah, he's putting laughing in the chat as well. Uh, and uh, also, I think as well, um, Muzio Valerio says, uh, this is the power of Delphi. Look, you know, I don't want to just sit here and tell you all the benefits of Delphi. I want us to show you the things that you can do in Rad Studio. And uh, and let's be honest, I'm not going to lie. There are some things you cannot do easily in Rad Studio. And some things, yes, are probably easier done a different way. That's why, for example, we have the Python uh, libraries. If you're going to write machine learning apps and things like that, it's way easier to find a Python library that does large-scale um, uh, machine learning. But with Python for Delphi, you can include that, that Python um, code in your Delphi program. And so you've got the security and portability of the um, Delphi applications that stop you know, people going in and hacking your script and editing it and all the rest of it. But, um, but incorporate all the power of the Python as well. Same thing with the Delphi FMX libraries and the Delphi VCL libraries. Your Python apps... A typical Python app quite often looks like it was written in, you know, um, in the 1980s war games era. You know, greetings, Professor Falcon, would you like to play a game? And they do look like text-based um, apps, or they've got UIs that are kind of all right, but a bit like Windows 95 kind of style, or even Windows 3.1, God forbid. But uh, if you use... Um, the Delphi FMX um, libraries for Python, for example, you can then include the Delphi styles and it makes your apps look like a million dollars. And in fact, we had a session on exactly that. So, uh, it, you know, disclaimer, I am obviously Embarcadero's uh, developer advocate. It is my job to advocate for um, you guys out there as developers to our people inside Embarcadero and the other way around, advocate um, what we do in Embarcadero and trying to show you the the better things that we do and show you um, ways of making the best use of the products and things like that. That is my job. And I did have someone asking about um, 
uh, an SDK, and uh, it was Android 34, I think. I've, I've had a very busy week on this conference, and um, they were saying, um, can they make the Android... Uh, see, I, sh I should have paid attention. I was distracted by the previous session. Uh, let's see what they were asking for. I, I can't remember. But uh, it was to do with a specific... Um, uh facility um android shop interface or something version four i think and uh and i i don't know the answer i say this all the time i am a developer i, I get up every day and write code but i don't have all the answers there are plenty of people out there that are way better than me i don't claim to be the best in the world i'm relatively good at, at passing the information on but there are um plenty of other developers out there i'm not, I'm not bad i mean i've done it for 38 years i've you know I, I know what I'm doing, but there are other um, people that are specifically good at particular areas. Um, and uh, so if you want to email me, um, please do. It's ian.barker at uh, embarcadero.com. So my name and then uh, at embarcadero.com. I'm not going to give you technical support. I may point you in the... the, the uh, you, you know, the areas of examples that might help answer your question. If I get a billion emails um, about something, I'm more likely to write a blog post, but I do respond to emails, uh, uh, even ones that are negative. If you've got something that's a problem, tell me. I mean that. I, I mean that on behalf of the company because we want to make sure that our products are as best, uh, as good as we can within the resources of time, numbers of developers, money, you know, we don't have unlimited resources. Um, even Microsoft don't have unlimited resources. You know, uh, every day, my Teams, Microsoft Teams, crashes. And I've reported it multiple times. And in fact, uh, Patrick's just put my email address in the uh, chat there. But my Teams crashes multiple times. And I know people on that team at Microsoft. And have said, this is a problem. And they can't fix it. And yet they have many many times the, the uh, available um money for it there's some it's something to do with dotnet don't use dotnet write it in delphi you know uh skype used to be written in delphi actually funnily enough um the original version of skype which was extremely stable was uh, written in delphi and that's the benefit of rad studio and delphi is it's uh, it um it works and keeps on working you know and uh, you can upgrade the operating system around it and unless you're doing something very specific your Delphi programs will continue to work. So, uh, and, you know, if you don't believe me, try it. Try it. Call me a liar. Try it. Download a free trial, or uh, and uh, we've got some uh, links for that. Let me just uh, find our tickers that we can go. Um, but you can either go to here um, and get a, a special offer um, where you can get 20% off. So if you actually, you're on an older version, you're thinking, you know what? Yeah, there are some features in there that I could do with. Uh, go into there and get 20% off. And you'll also get a year's uh, maintenance included, which means you get the next version included as well. So you won't have to pay again for that next version. It's uh, free. The next version is coming out um, later on this year. We, we, don't, we can't say for certain. And anything we say about the future version is uh, with the caveat that forward-looking statements like that, this is a legal requirement for me to say this, Forward-looking statements are based on exactly that. There's supposition. We hope, we aim to uh, get certain features in, but nothing is uh, written in stone until the general availability release. So the actual release where we say it's GA and it's released to public. So even if there's a beta program out there or something like that and it's got a feature in, that feature could be removed. Or we might change it completely or you know, don't base any business decisions on what, what we're saying about a particular beta. But we do run beta programs all the time because we want feedback. We want people to say, hey, when I do this, this, and this, and this, something goes wrong. Because nobody wants to have, um, you know, a product with, with bugs in it. But the complexity of any, any system, particularly something like Rad Studio, which is horrendously complex behind the scenes, is going to have issues. You know, and anybody says that it's bug-free is, is a liar. Uh, you know they are you're developers you should know that it's not possible to produce bug free software it's just bug fewer software is <laughs> the thing so let's look at um some of the questions that were specific about patrick um whilst we're on the subject i would like to call out patrick um particularly 
uh, for uh, this uh, scan on here. Patrick streams almost every day, not always, but almost every day on Twitch. If you're a fan of Twitch or you want to see someone who is genuinely coding live using Rad Studio, and you just saw him doing an incredible demonstration of, uh, you know, threads and things like that, then um, you should uh, scan this and watch him on Twitch because he'll speak in French, <coughs> but... The code that you see is universal. It's understandable to anybody. I don't care what your language is. The Delphi code will make sense. And I can see people are scanning the code now, which is great. Um, but go to Patrick's um, Twitch. If you watch him regularly, also do him a favor and subscribe, particularly if you're an Amazon Prime um, uh, uh, person or something like that, because you can subscribe to his channel for free. Patrick gets a little blip from that. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's like he needs 50 million before he can actually like go and buy a cake or something. But, uh, you know, uh, when people are doing things like this, where they're streaming a language that we love and teaching us stuff almost just by, you know, um, by accident because you're watching how they code, then I really, really do recommend that uh, you, uh, you, you, you scan that and go to Twitch because I watch him and I, I, I'm a you know, fairly experienced developer. Uh, I can't watch them all the time because I've got 50,000 billion things happening. But it's nice to drop in and, you know, it's got a friendly community. Not many people always there, but that's what we're trying to do is to, to you know, improve that by scanning that. So if you feel like supporting him and want to see more of what Patrick's doing, and he does all sorts of things, um, games, he writes a lot, then go to Twitch and, and scan there. And, uh, and he's also got a website. Um, and if you scan that code, uh, you'll go directly to his website where he's got um, more of the same of what you saw today. Um, so great stuff. Uh, got a lot of time for Patrick. Um, you know, I, I think he's insane <laughs> to have, uh, he's always in the chat. Every webinar is done. He comes along every single day and answers it. And we don't pay him to do that. <laughs> we don't, you know, threaten him or anything like that. He does it because, uh, you know, he's that kind of guy. And uh, and uh, I I absolutely um, and in fact he's just saying here um, if you don't have a QR code you can go to here as well on Twitch but uh, you know Patrick you know people have noticed that you do this and uh, you know believe me we'll be coming back to you about this because um, you're a pretty decent guy and we we appreciate what you're doing so um, we just need to go and address a couple of questions because there were quite a few. Let's see where we're going with the next session. Uh, oh, okay, Marco has that. Okay, so I know Marco's not going to be there for the Q&A, so he's already messaged me and said he'll be off somewhere else. So um, we're not going to quite do that yet, Martha. Um, we're just going to carry on and do some of the uh, questions that came up in um, Patrick's session. Um, so just to uh, – she, she jumped too soon. <laughs> so uh, just to address some of the, the questions there, um, they were asking about the um, the socket messaging library, um, and so they were saying, you know, what's the difference between um, the socket messaging library and Indie? And uh, Patrick answered this and said, um, the socket messaging library is based on T-Socket from Embarcadero Runtime Library, which is uh, over a native SDK for each OS. So basically, it doesn't matter whether you're on uh, one or another. Um, it doesn't depend on anything like Open SSL. Uh, and that's quite important uh, for those of you that um, understand things like um, SSL and HTTPS and all the rest of it. Open SSL is absolutely everywhere, and Patrick's uh, stuff doesn't require that, so it's it's a, a real um, uh, plus. The other thing that um, someone asked about the code generator and all the rest of it, and uh, as he said, it's over the messaging library. <laughs> So uh, it won't change if you change something in the library to use India or something like that because it's a layer on top of the, of the thing. That's what he's saying. So if you're using India or ICS, which is a fantastic uh, internet uh, communication suite, I think that's what it's called, um, really worth looking at. Got a lot, a lot of time for him. And Patrick is one of our MB, MVPs, and our MVPs are, um, you know, pretty amazing, really. Um, the things that they do are... are uh, you know, I used to be one myself, but you you have no idea how much time these people put into things. Um, 
Barton, who is in the DFW area, I believe. Um, where can we get the code for the Del demo Delphi program you use today? Um, if you go to uh, Patrick's site, which we showed uh, just now, um, I believe all his demo code is on GitHub. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Patrick, but I believe it is. I'm actually looking on a different chat now. Um, and I think he might have asked that about the XML mapper actually as well. So that could be something else. I, my little questions that I tag don't always tell me which session they're in. Anyway, um, I just wanted to, um, you know, spend a little while saying how um, great that session was and, um, you know, give, giving Patrick back some, some love from us to say, you know, thank you so much for what you do. We really appreciate it. You are absolutely crazy to go ahead and, and uh, uh, answer because, you know, he's there till 11 o'clock at night or whatever time it is his time. Um, answering questions for you guys and he does a very good job as well and he helps me out considerably and Martha and all the rest of the team as well so um, appreciate it um, if you are watching this on YouTube can you uh, click on the like button and click on the subscribe button I do sound like it's that way actually. that way I don't know uh, I found I sound like some kind of influencer now. I don't know. I'm probably going to make cakes out of glass or whatever they do. <laughs> uh, but uh, if you can, if you're on YouTube, can you click on like and subscribe? That way you get notified when we do more webinars like this. We the this set of webinars this week. We are going to do some more. Um, what's happened is when you ask your questions, we do take notes of what you're asking, and people say things like, "I really think there should be a webinar on this subject or that subject." Um, of course, we want to be producing webinars that you want to see. And so we will actually um, make sure that we try and, um, you know, do some webinars on those subjects. And, um, uh, you know, to, to answer your questions that come up in the, the these these this coding boot camp this week, um, there's going to be a lot more webinars. We've been a little bit quiet for a while because, you know, Jim McKeith, my predecessor, uh, moved on and then I had to get to grips with the whole situation and then there was a whole big learning process going on behind the scenes so there weren't so many webinars but that will be fixed we'll be doing more of those 